We ask you to bless everyone in the group with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that we're able to understand and discern the nuances of the presentation Kathy's going to give. We also pray that she's covered with the Holy Spirit giving her presentation. Lord, we, we love you and we can feel the Holy Spirit coming in. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, welcome everybody Amen. to the Phoenix, uh, Greater Phoenix Hallelujah. Executive Chapter Meeting. This is our 17th consecutive weekly Hallelujah. meeting that the Holy Spirit has orchestrated. And we really did not intend on, on going this long. But, you know, when the Holy Spirit starts moving, there's, there's no stopping. So uh, it, it's been such a pleasure. God is sending us very qualified experts in certain fields. And uh, we have learned so much. And, and so we've talked about maybe cutting back and going to once a month or, or something like that. And we have many people that ca say, please, don't do this. We're, we're growing so fast because the spiritual food and nourishment we're getting from experts around the, 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 the Christian community is just uh, unheard of that we can have these, this many experts come and, and train us. And, and we don't have to, to fly across the United States or we don't have to bring people in and, and spend a lot of money. We're here on Zoom and God is using this technology. So we praise God for each person here and each person that's going to see the recording uh, because we do put this up on YouTube. And I anticipate that this will be a good, um, uh, a good venue to send around the world uh, when we get it up on YouTube tomorrow morning. You can send it out to people that need to learn uh, techniques that Kathy's gonna teach and as well as people that may need deliverance themselves and to be uh, uh, greater used in the kingdom because, you know, we're in, uh, we're, we're in some crazy times. I tell you, I've never, I've never seen anything like this, but Kathy, uh, I was, I was praying about who would we get to be our next speaker uh, a few weeks or a month ago and her, uh, and I saw an ad, of, I guess, through Charisma Magazine, it just illuminated, and which means to me, the Holy Spirit wanted me to contact her, and she was so gracious to, to come, even though it's nine o'clock her time, and maybe uh, time for her bedtime, but uh, yeah, in a little bit. But anyhow, we want to introduce Kathy uh, DeGraw. And so Kathy, welcome. Please feel free to share what God's got on your heart. Amen. Thank you for having me. We just bless the Lord and bless the name of the Jesus Christ. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit, for whatever you want to do. Holy Spirit, we just yield to you right now in the name of Yeshua Messiah. I speak and I decree for your presence just to come upon us. Father God, we love you. We worship you. We magnify your name. We exalt you. Jesus, you are holy. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being our teacher, our comforter, our guide, our friend, our counselor. And we just say you are in control tonight. Have your way. We yield. We submit. We sacrifice to you. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. And just come in like a mighty flood, like a, a rushing wind, like the Ruach Kodesh that you are, that fresh wind, that fresh fire. Come in with fresh wind and fresh fire right now. Come in with that fresh wind, that fresh fire right now. Fire of God, just come in right now. Encourage your people in the name of Jesus. I bind and I rebuke every distracting spirit in Jesus Christ's name, I bind and I rebuke electronics from malfunctioning in Jesus Christ's name. We bind and rebuke and take authority over Zoom bombers in the name of Jesus and internet trolls and people who would want to disrupt this communication. And we say it will not exist. Every witch, every warlord, we say your curses do not 
stand and have any power and authority. We close all doors, all legal entry rights and access points in the name of Jesus Christ. I render the heavens open on our behalf. I thank you, Father, that you are going to rain down upon us tonight and give us fresh revelation, fresh application, fresh impartation. I thank you and I praise you. We silence every Jezebel spirit, every spirit that would come against the voice of the prophetic. Anyone who's read the internet announcements on this and is praying against this meeting, I bind you. I sever every cord, every ley line that you're trying to establish in the communication and frequency channels right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you and I praise you, Father, that we have authority and victory over all things, all things, and no weapon formed against us will prosper. No sickness or plague will come near our dwelling. I come against any body, physical ailment in you right now that would distract you from hearing the message of the Lord. I bind and rebuke every demonic infiltration in Jesus Christ's name. I bind and I rebuke every spirit of religion and legalism, every spirit of control in Jesus Christ's name. And I speak and I decree freedom, understanding, revelation, wisdom, and knowledge in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we praise you, Father, hallelujah, glory, 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 hallelujah, we just bless you, Lord, whoo, Jesus, I love, I love Jesus, I love when the presence of the Lord just comes in like a flood, I think he's here, and he just wants to speak to you, he just wants to impart into you on spiritual warfare tonight, on deliverance, on even on the prophetic, on how do we fight warfare prophetically? And when I say, how do we fight warfare prophetically? What I'm specifically saying is how do we fight and conquer warfare led by the very spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He is our instructor. He knows what needs to be prayed out. He knows what needs to be bound and restricted. When it comes to deliverance, when it comes to inner healing, there are so many formulas and we can get very legalistic in it. We can get legalistic in our prayers and we can be like, I have to do this and I have to repent. I have to renounce. I have to speak out this and all of that. We got to get rid of our formulas. What we have to do is rely on two things, the Holy Spirit's wisdom and the word of God. That's our foundation is standing on the word of God. And when we're speaking specifically about the ministry of deliverance and spiritual warfare, we must go to the gospels. We must follow the model of Jesus Christ. How did Jesus Christ pray? What did he speak to? How did he cast out demons? How did he wage warfare? And Jesus should be our ultimate model, not a man-made opinion, not a formula. And on my podcast show, The Prophetic Spiritual Warfare, I call this prophetic spiritual warfare because we want everything that we do, everything that exudes to be prophetically the Holy Spirit flowing out of us, okay? We are just a conduit. That's all we are, is a conduit. We are a platform for the Holy Spirit to move. We are a platform for the Holy Spirit to speak. We are a platform for the Holy Spirit to continue what Jesus already did at the cross. So we know at the cross that we have victory over the powers of the darkness. But also we know that what? The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy in John 10, 10. And we know that in this world, he is running rampant, waging war against us. And who better knows that war than the Holy Spirit who knows everything? And that's why we have to co-labor with the Holy Spirit. So the very first thing may seem foundational and basic to you tonight, but you need a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit, not just Father God, not just the Son, Jesus Christ, but the Holy Spirit. We have a trinity here. We have three in one. 
We need an individual relationship with each person of the Trinity. And as we really get to know the Holy Spirit, then we're going to hear him. He's going to convict us. He's going to correct us. He's going to rebuke us, but he's also going to impart. He's going to activate. He's going to give us the revelations and the instructions. And so we have to get to know who is the Holy Spirit, and we have to get in a place where he is our best friend. Because when the Holy Spirit's our best friend, this is a place that we want to get to. The one number one thing that people ask me in the ministry of deliverance is they say, I want discernment. And they're not saying, I want to be able to see in the demonic realm. They do want that too. Don't get me wrong. But they're like, I want discernment. I want to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. I want discernment to know what a demon is, how to fight, how to war, how to wage that. The only way we get discernment is through the Holy Spirit, through that relationship. We should have such a relationship with the Holy Spirit that as we're speaking out, he's pouring in, okay? So he's pouring in, we're speaking it out. He's pouring in. I call them drops or downloads. We want to get drops and downloads so that as we're in a prayer line, as we're in a coffee shop, as we're in a grocery store, as we're in street ministry, no matter where we are, okay, what we're doing is we're getting revelation from the Holy Spirit to pour out to the people in front of us. We're knowing what demon they have. We're knowing what stronghold. We're knowing what we have to bind and restrict because as we know what to bind and restrict from the Holy Spirit, we're going to be able to release supernatural deliverance. Okay. We don't have time all the time. There's times we do this, but all the time we don't have time for one hour, two hour, four hour and eight hour sessions. Sometimes we're only going to meet someone or have five minutes at the altar or five minutes while we're eating food at a restaurant table. The prophetic needs to go through with pinpoint accuracy into the heart of that person and pull out that demonic stronghold in five minutes or less. Now I'm going to tell you how you can do this. I'm going to show you what the Holy Spirit showed me years ago. You might want to write this down because it's a practical application that I still do today. When I started doing deliverance ministry years ago, and I've gone around internationally, and I've been part of thousands of deliverance uh, sessions, okay? So what you need to do is find out what are they struggling with, okay? That's our number one key. How do you find that out? Ask them, what is the greatest thing holding you back from the fullness of God? And they will expose their strong man for you. You won't need spiritual discernment. You can use general discernment. What occupies your thoughts? What can't you forgive yourself for? What consumes you? When you ask those types of questions, they will name their strong man, okay? So they might say, the cancer, the abortion I had, the divorce I had, the rejection I suffered when I was 11. Ask them and identify their strongman. Now you're going to use the Holy Spirit prophetically to find the root cause. And you can all do this in your own life even. And you can do this to anyone you minister to in five minutes or less. I'm going to give you a clear, precise example so you can help me supernaturally deliver people all over the world. Okay, so someone comes to you. I'm going to say they're 60 years old. And it's a woman. And she says, my friend is rejecting me right now. I'm having a hard time with it. I say, okay, how long has she rejected you for? And she might say eight years. So now I go back to eight. She's 52. Then I'll say to her, around 50, do you remember anyone rejecting you? Oh yeah, my husband divorced me. He rejected me for 10 years before he divorced me. Okay, now she's 40. So we're going to keep going back. It's called time lining. All right. The Holy Spirit showed me this, how to pull out that root so fast. And this is in my book, Discerning and Destroying the Works of Satan. I give you specifics on how to timeline this. So now what you're going to do. So she's 40 years old. Her husband's rejected her. Okay. Do you remember anything that happened in your 30s? So you don't have to pinpoint it so much by the year. Uh, yeah, my best friend of 30 years left me. Okay, great. Now she's about 28. 
what's the entry point? Did you have any rejection in your 20, while you were 28? I got fired. Okay, now you go back further. What happened around 25 or 20? So you keep going back. Now, what we're going to find out is at eight years old, her dad divorced her mom, left her, took her brother and sister. Now, here's the root cause. It's that legal right, that entry point. And we don't have to go through eight hours of healing and deliverance. We just found the root cause in that quick amount of time. All right. Then we deal with it. We break agreement with it and legal rights. Okay. We pull out that root cause. I want to explain a word that I just said. We break agreement with it. This is things that people don't know about deliverance ministry. Okay. First of all, Jesus cast out the demon. That's why people don't get free. We say, leave me alone. I rebuke you. Get out of my way. Stop bothering me. I call off this warfare attack. Read your red letter words of the Bible. Jesus cast the demon out. The word out. So when people say, I haven't received my freedom, or if you watching have not received your freedom, my question to you is, does anyone ever say, spirit of stress, get out in Jesus' name? So we have to address it as a spirit and tell it to get out. Now, a spirit cannot possess a Christian, but it can oppress. And so don't get caught up on how can a Christian have a demon. It comes into your soul or your physical body, but not your spirit man. So don't get all caught up. Call it out for what it is, a demonic defilement that's coming into your body, in your soul. It is a spirit entity that needs to be cast out as Jesus did. When you look at the Bible, Jesus did the ministry of deliverance first. In several passages in the Bible, it talks about casting out spirits before it talks about healing, before it talks about preaching, all right? He cast the spirit out first. He dealt with the demon. Why do people not get their physical healing? Because we're not dealing with the demon. We're not dealing with the entry point. Let me show you how. Cancer. Okay, the root cause of cancer is bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment. Now, we can get healed of cancer. We get healed of cancer, five to seven years. Oh, we're in remission and it comes back. Why does it come back? Because you might have got healed. Medical technology might have healed you, but you never cast the demon of cancer out, the spirit of infirmity out, the spirit of bitterness out. You never released forgiveness. So you have to go deep in the ministry of deliverance. If you are praying physical healing over someone, how many times have you prayed physical healing and they say, I was healed, but I lost my healing, okay? We don't lose our healing, friends, all right? You didn't fully manifest it because the demon wasn't cast out. Let's go to cigarette smoking. So a cigarette smoker quit smoking and they quit smoking for five years. Now, why did they start back up smoking? Because a trauma happened in their life, a stressful event, and they start smoking again. So why did it come back? Well, just like that cancer or an infirmity, you didn't take out the demonic spirits. You didn't cast out the demonic spirit of addiction, of tar, of nicotine, of tobacco, all of smoking. You have to look at those are all demonic spirits because why? They lure, they draw, they seduce, and they pull you back into the sin, back into the ungodly habit. And that's how we get into bondage again. And actually even those luring, seducing, those are demonic spirit names. Seducing isn't a sexual spirit. That's lust and perversion. Seducing is something that draws, lures, and pulls you 
into that sin. That's why people don't get delivered of pornography. So let's go there because I know this is just what the Holy Spirit wants right now, right? Let's talk about pornography. Let's talk about masturbation. Okay, first of all, let's expose the enemy. It's not just a man's disease. I've delivered thousands of women from pornography and masturbation and especially strong Christian women, okay? And that shouldn't even be in the same sentence. Strong Christian women, pornography and masturbation. But what does the enemy want to do? He wants to make us guilty. He wants to make us feel shame, unworthy, so that we don't fulfill our ministry calling, whether it's man or woman. Why don't people get delivered or why do they get rid of pornography and masturbation for a little while, but they're drawn back into it? Because there's demonic spirits in operation behind it. But it's not just a spirit of pornography and lust and masturbation and perversion. Now, you know that the entry points to those can be sexual abuse, sexual defilement, rape, molestation, incest. We know that those can be the entry points. But let's go even deeper, friends, okay? That is what the ministry of deliverance is. If we don't go deep, then we're wasting our time because the client or yourself is just going to need deliverance all over again. So we want to get people free and make them stay free. So the pornography, the masturbation, I'm going to start calling those lustful spirits just to ease of conversation here. You got a luring, a seducing, a drawing. There's this magnetic pull that pulls you back into your sin, no matter what it is. It one is called a mind binding spirit. And people miss this mind binding spirit. I talk about it so much on my podcast because that is why we don't get free from stress, anxiety, worry, fear, pornography, masturbation, a lot of those strongholds, because you have a mind binding spirit that like emotionally, physically, and spiritually just paralyzes you into that sin, into that negativity. So we have to cast that out by saying mind binding spirit, get out in Jesus name. But now I want to go back to that word I wanted to talk about. We want to break agreement with it. You see, when we've been in sin or we've been in pornography or we've been in fear or we've been in control, we came into agreement with that. And because we came into agreement, maybe we didn't seek our healing. Maybe we liked being in control. Maybe we didn't mind masturbation, whatever it is. You enabled it. You empowered that stronghold by not casting it out, by not fighting against it, by not resisting it. So now it doesn't always simply go by saying, I cast you out in Jesus name, because now it has a legal right because you didn't press through to your breakthrough. And maybe it wasn't your fault. Maybe it's because you didn't know about the ministry of deliverance. Maybe it was because of something that happened to you. Maybe you're passive or complacent. There's a lot of different reasons, but it doesn't matter. There's laws in the spiritual realm. And in the spiritual realm, you gave this principality a legal right to exist. So now you have to say, I break agreement with control. I break agreement with pornography. I break agreement with lust. Now that mind binding spirit that's trying to torment you and lock you down, you have authority over. And now that you broke agreement with it, you can go back and say, mind binding spirit get out in jesus name now i want to go back even further okay because we want to go deep i know you want to go deep tonight now why do we go into pornography and masturbation even fear different things like that over and over and over again because there is a familiar spirit that creates the same cycles and seasons and patterns in your life. Some people identify familiar spirits as witchcraft. A witchcraft spirit, a witchcraft. Leave it in that category. Don't cross them, okay? A familiar spirit is familiar with you, your family, your cycles, your seasons, your patterns, your words. They have familiarized themselves with you. They know you fear. They know your temptation. They know your negativity. They know, this is where we're going to expose the enemy, and I love this, 
They know what time of year is important to you, whether you really like 4th of July because it celebrates our freedom, whether you really like Christmas or Easter, your birthday. They target you three to four weeks before the special cycles and seasons of your life. Listen to that, friends. I want you to pay attention right now. On your little pad of paper, I want you to be like, that's me. Yep. Every year at Christmas, it attacks me. Every year in May, it attacks me. The other place they target is around the death of a loved one. Okay. It's not grief that you're struggling with every year. They come in and they attack you with this spirit of heaviness. You think it's grief over the anniversary of a loved one, all right? But it's not. It's a demonic attack. The demonic realm is so sneaky and so crafty. You have to be able to identify it. Now, this is what I want you to do, and this is how easy. Again, you could probably do this in five minutes. I'm going to say 30 minutes total if you're doing it for your own life. Identify what month that familiar spirit comes in. Does it come in around Mother's Day? Does it come in the summer? Does it come in around an anniversary? Now I want you to go back. How many years you have to? Okay, so we're in 2020 right now. Did it attack in 2019? What happened? Write down one sentence. Did it attack at the same time in 2018? What happened? Did it attack in 2017? Keep going back every year until you don't see where it had attacked, okay? I did this in my own life and I saw a familiar spirit. I'm not gonna say what month because I don't want the witches and warlocks to know, okay? But I saw it in my own life and I could go back about 14 years of this, you know, same, there was two months, the same two months. So now what have I learned? Now, about six weeks before then, I start praying against those familiar spirits. All right, we can break them and break the cycle, but this is the thing about the devil. What's he come to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. So is he ever gonna truly leave us alone? No, no. And so you have to look at that. I'm gonna give you another example because I just wanna, I wanna empower you, all right? So my husband broke his wrist seven years ago. He literally was up on an extension ladder for his job and he fell off the ladder and he said, Kathy, something pushed me off the ladder. He said, something pushed me. He didn't, he didn't tumble. I mean, nothing guys. He didn't stumble anything. He said, I felt a force push me off this ladder. First of all, I want you to know how good God is because I had just got done with a women's meeting. My team was praying for me for about 15 minutes, just like pouring into me. And I got the call five minutes later that he fell off the ladder and I had total peace. And I had total peace because I also made the ambulance drive him an hour to the hospital instead of 20 minutes to a hospital because we had had a bad experience at that hospital before and it almost killed him. So I'm like, you're gonna drive an hour. And they said, ma'am, you don't understand. We don't have enough medication to keep your husband pain free for an hour. And his wrist was shattered. He had several plates and screws and everything. And I said, you're going to drive him an hour. And I'm not kidding when I say our prayers petitioned heaven enough that he did not feel one ounce of pain until he got into the emergency room and could get more medication. Okay, so God goes before us. But now, so this, you know, is a tragedy. Now, I want to show you a few things in the spiritual realm here, because this is going to relate to our familiar spirit. And so he had to get, um, I think, five screws and two plates. And right when he was getting them, I, I fought the doctor on them. And I, and I said to him, I said, you can put those in to reconstruct his hand if you have to. But I want them taken out when his hand is healed. And he said, no, we don't do that. All right. And I just kept being persistent. And he said, if I don't put these plates in your husband's hand, and he cursed my husband, of course, of what would happen. But I said, I want these plates out. I don't want these in. And friends, I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I was so adamant about it. But here's what happened after my husband had the surgery. For six months, while those plates were in his hand, 
he went in a depressive state and he was not the man I knew. He was not the spiritual strength that I had been accustomed to. And then all of a sudden, his hand starts hurting and aching and he can feel the plates moving. And he went back to the surgeon and guess what had to happen? The surgeon had to take the plates out. And that very day, I prayed deliverance over him. He's still half sedated, he's in the chair. And he said, Kathy, I feel like a totally different person. Why? Because now that familiar spirit will try and attack, not only with the spirit of death, because it pushed him, he should be dead, okay? He fell on concrete floor. They thought they broke, he broke his back and everything. And he just had, you know, the whole hand took the blunt of the fall. But now that familiar spirit that tried to take him out would try and put depression upon him. It would try and make another accident. Or maybe you know how some people say, oh, I had plates and it's raining now and now my hand hurts because of the weather. Guys, that's a lie from the pit of hell, all right? We live victoriously. So now what I have to do every year is four weeks and I have that date in my head, trust me. Four weeks before, I'm warring, I'm decreeing, I'm declaring, I'm coming against that spirit of death, that spirit of destruction, that familiar spirit, that depressing spirit, everything that tried to take out my husband. And that's what you have to do. That's going to lead me into the one thing that I know the Holy Spirit wanted me to impart into you tonight. Spiritual warfare is audible. You cannot fight the devil in your mind. You must speak out and decree and declare. You must be praying offensively against the enemy, against the tax. You see, when Jesus bound in the Bible, when he rebuked the devil in the Bible, when he rebuked the storm, all right, he gave it a follow-up command. Jesus spoke to what? The storm, the wind, and the sea. And so he rebuked it. Rebuke just means take authority over. But then we have to give it a follow-up command. What do you want it to do? It's not just enough to say in your head, I rebuke you, devil. I rebuke you, devil. You have to pray on the offense. The enemy is violent. You need to get violent against him and pray offensively for your children, for your government, for the world. You have to say, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. No sickness or plague is going to come near my dwelling. I bind it and I restrict every demonic territorial spirit from coming against me and my family. In Jesus Christ's name, I restrict the devil access from my publishing, from my book career, from my business, from my entrepreneurship, from my ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, every demonic arrow that's been towards me, in the name of Jesus, I send forth the fire of God, fire of God, apprehend my enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Jehovah Nisi that you are the Lord, my banner, that you cover me. I thank you, Father, and I claim Psalm 91 that when I dwell in that secret place that you're going to protect me, that I'm going to be under your covering and shadow. You say no perilous pestilence will come near me in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I hold you true to your word in the name of Jesus. I've been in the word of God. Now protect me from the spiritual realm, from sickness, from plagues, from diseases in the name of Jesus. You see, we wait and we pray on the defense instead of praying on the offense. Offense. And we need to pray offensively. Your words are prophetically assigned. They're targeted. When they come out, they're laced with power and authority because the Holy Spirit, He resides in you. So that stream that's coming out, that's the Holy Spirit's power. Because remember what I said at the beginning? We're just a conduit, we're a platform for the Holy Spirit. And so we got to release that and target it accurately and to the spiritual realm. And I wrote actually my book, Speak Out. I wrote this years ago. It's the power of um, audible prayer of decreeing and declaring. Decreeing and declaring is not a name it, claim it game. I don't believe in that at all, okay? What we have to do is we have to speak and target the spiritual realm. We have to make a demand on the prophetic realm. Every time we speak out, an angel or a demon should be activated and dispatched or bound and restricted because of what we said, because our words have a power and they get results but you can't fight the devil in your mind 
You can't fight them in quiet. You can't fight them in silence. You have to be speaking out. You have to be targeting. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit, okay? Because what do people do? They, they read warfare decrees. They read prayers that authors write. That's great. I got some books on my website if you want to go and read declarations. But what I want you to do is I want you to get to a place of perpetual communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit so that as he's depositing, you just release it because you know what? He's going to know what your family needs to be released. There was one day I got up in bed and I sat there and he said, this is what I want you to pray out today. Give me favor, unmerited blessing, and help me reach people far and wide. So I'm sitting in my bed saying, give me favor, unmerited blessing, help me reach people far and wide. Give me favor, unmerited blessing, help me reach people far and wide. I prayed that out for 15 minutes that day. That's all I prayed out because that's what the Holy Spirit told me to pray. And I saw 16 manifestations in 24 hours of giving me favor, unmerited blessing, and helping me reach people far and wide. 16 manifestations in 24 hours because the Holy Spirit told me what to pray. And so friends, that's why you need those drops that download that revelation. You need time to be still and quiet. That's why you don't hear from the Holy Spirit because sometimes you're so busy praying, you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to, to tell you. Or when you're in the deliverance ministry, you're trying to figure out deliverance based on rules and regulations and everything else. And you can't, you can't because why? because you aren't hearing from the Holy Spirit because you're so busy talking that you're not hearing from him. You're not yielding. And that's what you have to do. You must yield to the Holy Spirit and allow him to be your instructor, your teacher, your guide, your lead. And so there's so many different facets when you're looking at deliverance ministry and even with the familiar spirits, you know, it was the Holy Spirit that was showing me, Kathy, you know, the devil's trying to take your husband out. The devil's trying to put your husband in a place of, of depression. He didn't struggle with depression. My husband's not a depressed guy at all, but that familiar spirit wanted to come in. Now, now I want to show you something else. What was on those metal plates? Demonic attachments. Okay. So somehow through that whole thing, because he was a totally different person once those plates were out. And remember, I had the check. I'll call it a check in my spirit that I didn't even want metal plates implanted in his body. I knew enough that I did not even want them. So now what do we have? We have a demonic entry access point. Now don't freak out if you have plates in you, okay? Just pray over them anoint them, anoint that part of your body, bind and restrict any demonic activity. But I also think it's a good place for you to go and say, did I have an implant in me? How was I before it? How was I after it? Do you feel defeated now that you have an implant? Do you, do you feel defeated if you have a prosthetic? That's what you need to say, because there's no defeat in the Lord Jesus Christ. The defeat is against the kingdom of darkness, not against the kingdom of light. And so you need to go and get that defeat out because defeat victim mentality, that's going to prevent you from moving in your full destiny and your full freedom. And I need you. I need you. I'm talking to each and every one of you watching. I need you for the kingdom of God. I need you to walk in your rightful place and position. I need you to walk in authority. I need you to fulfill the calling that God has on your life because you have someone to reach that I'll never be able to get to. You have someone to relate to that's never going to relate to me. And you have a calling, a kingdom assignment, whether it's marketplace, whether it's elderly, whether it's youth, whether it's a soup kitchen, you have something and you need to rise up and stop feeling defeated and victimized. And I'm talking to someone prophetically right now, right now. And I, there's about seven of you that are watching this broadcast, probably more, but that's what the number I'm getting. You're feeling victimized. You're feeling defeated. You're feeling like you're an outcast. Jesus. And the Holy Spirit says, I'm breaking that from you right now. I'm breaking that from you right now. Defeat, I command you out. 
I abort your mission in the name of Jesus Christ. Every victim mentality, every spirit of passivity and complacency, slothfulness and procrastination, I command it to go. Every mind-binding devil that's been plaguing all of you, any of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Messiah, I command that mind-binding spirit to take its claws, its tentacles out of your mind right now. Fire of God, go down and burn the roots of that mind-binding spirit, never to be reformed again in Jesus Christ's name. Every lying spirit, every spirit of deception, I serve you eviction notice papers. I command you to get out in the name of Jesus. Every blueprint of hell that's been written against you. I command it to be burned up by the fire of God. Fire of God, apprehend their enemies right now in the name of Jesus. Fire of God, apprehend that depression right now in the name of Jesus. Fire of God, remove bipolar in the name of Jesus. Get out in Jesus Christ's name. Every spirit of fear, I speak to you and I command you to go in Jesus' name. Some of you don't want to lose that stronghold of fear in your life. Fears become your friend. Fears become your comfort. It's what you know. Some of you don't know how to live without your freedom. Without the de demons. You don't know how to live with freedom. Some of you don't know. Your demonic penetration does not define you. Christ defines you. Your identity is in him. Romans 8.15 says we've been given the spirit of adoption by which we can cry out, Abba, Father. Don't identify with your family. Don't identify with your past. You have a destiny. Forget your history. And forget the fear that's plaguing you. Who will I be? What will it look like? How will I renew? What will happen? Fear is the opposite of faith. Faith and trust are interchangeable. If you have fear, you're not trusting God in a particular area of your life. Let's get real. Let's get personal. COVID, coronavirus, sickness, disease, cancer. I don't care what it is. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. That's who we need to trust in. And if you are more concerned about getting coronavirus, then you're not trusting God to be your healer, your provider, your protector. And we have to look to the author, the finisher, the sustainer of this life. And what we're doing right now is we're not keeping our eyes on him. Our eyes are all around. Our ears are wide open to what is the news saying? What's the coronavirus stats in my state? What is this person saying? Oh, my friend has it. Rebuke it. Take authority over it. But it comes with taking authority over your own fear first. It's not enough to rebuke a sickness and disease. You still have to get down to the root cause and up to the principalities and powers, those spiritual hosts in high places, that wickedness. And right now, what's happening is COVID, actually racism, and fear are all intertwined. Watch this. I released a word on Charisma Magazine. You can Google it. Like Google it, Kathy DeGraw, COVID, and uh, Charisma, and it'll come up. But this is what the Lord showed me recently. What is racism? Well, with right now the social injustices and when the African-American men die, it's a spirit of death and murder. What's over our churches right now? They're trying to be what? Shut down, closed. It's a spirit of death and murder against our churches. What's over COVID? It's a spirit of death and murder. So there's a spirit of death and murder over the world. It's a principality of fear. But now let's watch one more thing. It's a python spirit. And a python spirit comes to squeeze and suffocate the life out of you. What happened in the racial riots? 
I can't breathe. What's happening in COVID? Lung ailments, people can't breathe. You see this? There's a direct correlation. It's not about COVID. It's not about racism. It's about what's happening in the principality in the spiritual realm over the earth. And we have Python spirits. We have spirits of death. We have spirits of sabotage. We have spirits of fear. We have all these things that are coming down. But you know what feeds them? Our fear. Your fear feeds them. Your fear feeds them. And the Lord told me four years ago, he said, Kathy, something's going to happen in the world. And I need you to root fear out of your life so that you can be in faith when everyone else is in fear. I'm 52 years old. I lived in fear for 40 years of my life. So I know a little bit about fear. And now I come to help Jesus destroy the works of the devil and to destroy that fear. And it begins with you. Because if you're in fear of how am I going to feed my family, what's going to happen to my finances, what's going to happen in our government election, what's going to happen with COVID, am I going to get this? You're feeding the principality of fear that's ruling over the earth. Now, what are you doing? You're co-laboring with it, you're enabling it, and you're coming into agreement with it. Do you see that, friends? You're coming into agreement with it. Now you're feeding this fiery furnal that's above the earth. And what are we doing? We're just praying. COVID go, sickness and disease be bound. That's all we're praying. We're not targeting everything that's up in the spiritual atmosphere. And you want to know what the Python spirit does? It squeezes and it suffocates. The Python spirit silences the voice of the prophetic. The Python spirit makes you stagnant and dry in your spiritual walk. It comes to squeeze the life out and make you prayerless. That's what it does. But we're not looking at all the principalities because we're in panic of what's happening, what's closing, or we're, you know, gaining all this information from the news instead of gaining all prayer strategies from the Holy Spirit. So that's what we really need to do, friends, is gain some prayer strategies from the Holy Spirit on how to target this accurately. If you go over to charisma c-h-a-r-i-s-m-a courses.com we actually the holy spirit gave me this and we designed an absolutely free e-course for you on how to conquer fear there's no strings attached you just put in your your name and your email address and you have access to it through your through your email address to how to conquer fear and it was amidst this whole COVID thing, the Lord said, Kathy, I want you to root it out. And for me to go, and I wrote the whole entire program, all the notes, all the study questions, did the videos, and my publisher uploaded it, got it all up within 24 hours. You know it's the Lord. It's the Lord. And so friends, I want to just bless you with that. Go over to charismacourses.com and grab that, How to Conquer Fear. Share it with your friends. Go over there and, and share it. Copy and paste it to your social media, your email address space. Let's get people free from fear because you know what? If they're in fear, it's affecting you because their words are affecting you. They're feeding that principality of fear and it's not lessening. And so we really need, that's a bottom line. We need to get the world delivered from fear and we need to be decreeing and declaring out properly against it all. So I'm going to go, and I, I know this was like deep teaching. It was all over the place. So I'm going to let you guys ask some questions if you want to open it up for questions. I ask? Go ahead. Wait, Colene. Do you have a Can question? Go ahead or wait? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Kathy, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm Galinde, and I would like to know, is there a scripture about, um, you, you said your husband had these plates in his hand, and they were um, de demon attached, I think you called it. it is there any um, scripture about that demons can be attached on objects? The last speaker had the same thing, and I'm just curious if there's something in the scripture relating to that. 
when we look at the scriptures, we can see that, you know, and, and in real life, we can see that, you know, demons were in different places, territories, you know, even with the swine in Mark 5, they didn't want to leave that territory. Can I give you a specific, uh, off the top of my head, a demon can attach to an object? I probably cannot give you a specific scripture, but I can tell you from many examples, like crosses, if you look at a cross, a lot of times they're made in China, okay? They're made in the same factory as Buddha's. And the Chinese dedicate this stuff before they leave the country to Buddha. And so we've even had crosses that we've seen demons coming off of them after we've purchased them and didn't know it. And so we've seen a lot of objects, um, demons being on jewelry, um, especially like generational jewelry, Indian, um, turquoise, silver, you know, witches use jewelry. So can I give you a scripture? Thus says the Lord, there's a demon on an object. No, but can I tell you from the thousands of deliverances that we've done and just being able to see the demons that they are there. Thank you. Kathy, can you can you talk a little bit about about uh, soul ties? I know a lot of people. It seems like uh, are studying soul ties, and I know you have a a lot of information about that. Yeah, um, for deeper teaching, people can go over definitely to my YouTube page, and I do have a teaching there on soul ties. The one thing that is hardly unmasked in soul ties. So let's just you know discover what it is first real quick. A soul tie is an evil spirit or demonic spirit that can attach to you from someone you're in a relationship with. It does not have to be a sexual or intimate relationship. It doesn't have to be a spouse. It can even be a friendship, a boss, a coworker, anyone who you have an affection or a relationship towards, even if it's a pure affection. So I want to, you know, make sure that you know that. And so a soul tie for example, like say you've never dealt with rejection and all of a sudden you have a friend and for a couple of years, you're friends and then they've dealt with rejection their whole life. And now all of a sudden you're dealing with rejection. All right. That's a soul tie that can come in through them. So demonic spirits for better words can jump. All right. It's just like, um, let's say this: you're walking down the mall and you see someone that's goth and what do you kind of do oh you know or you know maybe you're you know hey let me pray for you and get you saved i don't know how you know you are but you can kind of feel that <clears throat> that spiritual force right and so that's what um the soul ties they just they can jump after you're in a relationship they can attack you if you have sin or something's open i tell people you know if you're in a bad marriage, don't pray for people right now that have marriage problems because that soul tie, you know, can feed that also. And so we want to be careful there. But what people don't know about soul ties is generational curses can become soul ties. They can jump. So I'll give you a couple of examples. I delivered an entire family line. So we're looking and we're breaking all the generational curses. There was um, mental illness, suicide, alcoholism, and freak accidents and deaths, okay? And we did five generations, and I charted it out. I teach this in my deliverance school and, and everything. So what we saw was like for the first two generations, freak accidents. I mean like really freak accidents, suicides, and stuff. Well, then by the time it got to the third, fourth, and fifth generation, we saw it in the spouses. We saw it in the boyfriends. We saw, you know, all of it was jumping over to a soul tie. And so people don't often identify that. So we're so focused on the soul tie that we don't realize the entry point was a generational curse. And so that's what we have to know. And then with generational curses, it's not as simple as just going to the altar and saying generational curse be gone in Jesus name. Okay. You got to go deep. You got to go into like a family tree. Again, if you if you just Google DeGraw for my last name, charisma and generational curse, 
I've written probably like five different articles on Charisma Magazine on generational curses that will help you um, try and identify those. And you can also go over to charismacourses.com. And I have my seven main e-courses right now for, they're on sale right now. And so you can go over there and they'll teach you about generational curses, soul ties, deliverance, how to war in the spirit, all of that. So you can get a lot of that information there too. And so that's what we, we got to really know, okay, how to target it and go deep. And that's the challenge is that people don't go deep. But I want to show you one more example of a soul tie that people don't look for. But I ministered to this guy and his um, wife, he met his high school sweetheart you know, like he was 68, I think years old when he got reconnected with his high school sweetheart and her mom had ALS, Lou Gehrig's. Okay. And so he, she died. Now when someone dies, those spirits go out into the atmosphere. They don't die. So the spirits are released back into the atmosphere. He got Lou Gehrig's disease six months later. Now what's, you know, Lou Gehrig's is a very rare disease. And so her mom had it. She was a very negative person and he got it. And so he got a soul tie of it. And so unfortunately he never got healed. I mean, he got a, a lot of healing and stuff. But what happened is when he'd get the healing, he had, you know, there were like three ministries praying over him. He would go every week to one or two ministries and, you know, he'd feel a lot of fire, a lot of deliverance, but his wife would go home and not purposely, but you know, her mom died. So her words were cursing and negating everything that we were doing in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. And he ended up, you know, dying from it. And so that can be the power of a soul tie. And so you can be looking at, let's heal this Lou Gehrig's, okay? Or let's get him healed. But you see, we knew the soul tie. We knew the entry point. And that's what we have to do to really bring forth complete freedom and deliverance. And, and like I said, he had a lot of powerful encounters. Um, he felt his mind and his nerves being redone as we laid hands on him. But, you know, every week the wife was just, you know, speaking out those words and, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And, you know, that just, you know, really brought him down in the end. So soul ties are powerful. Again, it's not enough just to go to an altar and say all soul ties be gone in Jesus name. We must go deeper. Kathy, uh, just real quick. I hate to, I don't want to feel like I'm interrupting. Um, right before you said that, it, it came into my spirit to, to bring up this, the scripture that the Lord has brought to me time and again about my people perish for lack of knowledge, for lack of wisdom, for lack of vision. And we have to understand that these times are perilous and that as warriors in the kingdom of God, we have to go deep. We have to learn. We have to impart the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding God gives us in how to move in the kingdom of God. And, you know, this is like, this is life and death. And, what you're saying, it, it bears witness in my spirit because I have, I have been to the tip of the spear in some areas God's taken me uh, around where there's these, these demonic presence that are trying to take God's people out. They're trying to take out anybody who they can. And there are people who serve the enemy and become conduits for that. And they are, they're, they're just basically the enemy's puppets. So if, if we're going to war, we're going to war with, you know, be, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So um, I really am, am thankful for what you're, you're sharing with us tonight. Bless you. Thank you. May I ask a question, please? Tim, may I ask a question, please? Yes, come in, Linda. Wonderful. Thank you, Kathy. It's been... <laughs> It's been, wow, very enlightening. I, I have written a number of things down here. <clears throat> Excuse me, perhaps the most, um, the most prevalent in my mind is, is um, when we tell spirits to go out of people, that is in, uh, in the understanding that those people really do want them to go. Um, we was placed for, for 
um, you know, in your instruction today, and even if even your prayer for us blanket fold, um, telling spirits to leave and and uh, that scripture that says, you know, when an evil spirit leaves mm -hmm. and then the place is swept clean, um, it can return, um, you know, with seven words. So um, I noticed that you, you didn't seem to pray uh, Holy Spirit light or um, Holy Spirit domination or maybe, maybe I missed it, you know, to fill that space. Um, right. And also... No, I... How would that apply, um, for example, when you said um, you might only have five minutes to minister to someone in a restaurant or supermarket line or something like that? If you deal with that, if you, if you, if you manage to deal with the roots, if the sickness is told to leave, pain is told to leave, they get relief and then they don't have follow-up, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the understanding. Is it not opening something up where potentially they can end up in a worse place? Okay. So first of all, I didn't pray Holy Spirit fill you at this, you know, time, but every time I do deliverance about every five spirits I cast out, I do call forth the Holy Spirit to come and fill. And so I'm always doing that when I'm in a prayer line, uh, you know, anything like that. And so, yes, we, we definitely want. So like I said, I do it about every five spirits. I don't even wait till the end because I want to keep filling that place. I never cast out demons out of someone that's not saved. So, you know, they have to be saved. And so if I am, you know, doing this in a store or, you know, street evangelism or something like that, it's because the Lord has sent me. And, you know, I already have opened up the conversation in that couple minutes of do they have a personal relationship? Do they believe in this? I personally have business cards. I have two things. I have business cards and I have street evangelism cards. I don't believe in praying for one person out in the community without giving them a card. There's so many evangelists that just pray. And we have cards that are called um, Be Love. I have a corporation. It's a prophetic street ministry and it serves the homeless and different people. So on the back of it, it says, you've been served today by a Kathy DeGraw ministry team member. If you need follow-up prayer, if you need a church home, it gives them our phone number, our email address. And so we're always having that connection with people. How can we follow up? We invite them to church, meetings, small groups, because the follow-up is very important. And we do actually address that because I'm an apostolic prophetic church. I'm actually in a very religious town. And so a lot of people aren't going to want to come to my church. And so there's a nice uh, full gospel charismatic mega church here in town. And so I usually steer a lot of people over there because they're going to be more comfortable. And so we do that. And I, I say the Holy Spirit moves that we can do that all in five minutes. And a lot of people, you know, will call us and follow up because. I, I'm passionate about that. Jesus said, go out and make disciples. He didn't just say, go out and save and deliver people. You mm -hmm. know, we got to make disciples and really empower them and let them know they're not alone after this journey or after the deliverance, because as you know, the battle starts after we're delivered. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to know, um, you know, that verse that says uh, the sins of the father visited on to the third or fourth generation. And then there's the other verse, you know, where the Lord Old Testament is saying that he, he won't hold um, <clears throat> the children responsible for the sins of the fathers, that each is responsible for their own. Um, and then, of course, that beautiful verse that we like to um, focus on, um, that the blessing of the Lord is to a thousand generations of them that love him. Um, so how does one counteract the other? If we really have a thousand, if, if we really have the blessing of the Lord to a thousand generations, um, even if there's to the third and the fourth generation and stuff present in our life, but basically what I'm saying is how, how is it still possible for, for the crud of the third and the fourth generation rubbish to severely inflict even Christian families when there is this declaration of the blessing to a thousand generations. 
there's a blessing to the thousand generations, but we still have to seek our deliverance. When we look at the Bible, it says, walk out your salvation. When we okay. study out that work salvation, it says, walk, it actually means walk out your deliverance. All right. Ooh, so wow. we have to walk out our deliverance. Our deliverance is a process. And so we are responsible for ours, but it's just, you can ask yourself the same thing. It's, it's life experience too. You know, I have someone I ministered to right now and the father's extremely much into pornography and masturbation. And now it's went down to the son and they've both repented, but it's such a stronghold that they're trying to break it off. So down to the grandsons. And so if you look at real life facts, you can see high blood pressure is going down the family line. It isn't it. And it should, you know, look at your own medical reports. You got your family's high blood pressure, your family's high cholesterol. Well, obviously it's not broken. You know, my parents had high blood pressure and I got it and then I broke it and I'm medication free. You know, so you got to learn how to break those generational curses. And the deception is everyone says, well, Jesus took it at the cross and it's all gone. You know, you can't, you can't look at it that way. It says, walk out your deliverance. And we have to be blessing makers, curse breakers. And if you look at your natural thing, if you do a family tree, okay, and this is what I teach in my deliverance school. If you do a family tree, you're going to see mom had diabetes. Now sister has it. Now brother has it. Obviously that's not a blessing to a thousand generations, is it? You know, that's a curse. It's still active that we got to get out. And so that's why we have to go deep in deliverance. You know, why do we repent for our forefathers? You know, because that's what we have to do. We got to repent. We got to root it out. We got to gut it out. And those curses do go forth. Can I tell everyone, you know, this is why I could show you from example, you know, of all the curses. And I know when you look at your own family tree, you're going to see that. But the, you know, the good thing about the ministry of deliverance, and we've done this with several families, as we sit grandma and grandpa down, all the kids and all the grandkids, and we do a group deliverance over them to break yeah, all of, sense. you know, mm -hmm. to break all of that. But, you know, we also know that, you know, Deuteronomy talks about the blessing and the curse. And so we got to work through the curse to get to the blessing. Unfortunately, we want that blessing to be automatic, but it's not. We got to work it out. But Kathy, you did speak about agreement. So... <sighs> I think there's a certain amount that we can um, arrest on behalf of others, but they have to be willing. They have to be wanting. We can't deliver somebody else. They have to deliver themselves, whether it's a, a you know, a six-year-old kid, an eight-year-old, a 15, a 25-year-old rebellion, 45. You can't pray. You can't pray. This is something for y'all. You can't just pray someone's deliverance. They, you have to cast demons out. You have to lay hands on them. They have to want the deliverance. You know, I get prayer requests all the time. Pray for my deliverance. It doesn't work that way. They have to have Jesus, you know, laid hands on them. He cast the demon out. He spoke to it. You can pray, Holy Spirit, convict them. Holy Spirit, expose their sin. Holy Spirit, give them a desire to want to get deliverance. But someone has to want that deliverance you know i'm not saying you can't pray in a grocery store spirit of stress go that's something light but i'm saying strongholds they have to want the deliverance and participate in that deliverance session thank you okay anybody else i have a, I have a quick question Can, oh go you know, ahead. You, i'll wait <laughs> okay i um we didn't hear very much about the testimony of you personally. And my question is, what drew you into this deliverance? Why did you do this? You know, this is interesting. <laughs> I like that. Is it an experience in your own life? Or is it just you woke up one day and said, I want to deliver demons out of people? No, no, I, I definitely did not wake up one day. I actually was um, raised Catholic. I was kind of a Christmas Easter Catholic. And so I really didn't have a spiritual background. My husband started, um, my husband came from a family line of pastor, pastors, but they were Methodists, you know, all religion and, and tradition. And then my husband got called into ministry and to be a pastor. And through that, 
Um, I just had a, a love for ministry. But what happened actually is we get we got thrown into what I'm going to call demonic boot camp, honestly. And we were in a church that had split. We were fresh. We were green, no seminary, nothing, because in our denomination, they let you go to seminary. Why you pastor? And so the church had already split four times and they didn't tell us that. So we went in and we started having paranormal experiences, Jezebel spirits. I didn't even know what a Jezebel spirit was, okay? But we lived in a parsonage. There would be music playing through our air ducts. The devil tried to kill my son twice. He tried to kill my husband once while we were there. The copy machine would growl. Uh, just a lot of paranormal experiences. And we didn't know a whole lot. And God just brought these spirit-filled Christians into our life. We were already tongue-talking and stuff. But um, they brought Christians into our life that, you know, really showed us the spiritual warfare. And my husband just said one day, he goes, we're going to go into deliverance ministry. And I said, no, I'm going to go into healing ministry. You're going to go into deliverance ministry. And it was just really that boot camp because after that, we, we ended up leaving the denomination and we needed a lot of healing. And I just, like I said, when we started, or maybe it was when I was in the interview here, I spent the first two years of my life after that, just prostrate on the floor, seeking Jesus. I just wanted Jesus. I wasn't looking to be a prophet. I wasn't looking to be a deliverance minister. I wasn't looking, you know, for anything. I just wanted Jesus. I was a worshiper. I was just a sold out lover to the Lord. And out of that, he birthed it. And, and this was the other real interesting, it's really kind of a funny story. This is how I got launched is I was in a mega church and some lady just walked by me one day and she said, Hey, do you want to go to breakfast tomorrow? And I said, yes. And she doesn't know why she asked me. I don't know why I said yes. And uh, I ended up delivering her a week later and we got a newspaper article to prove it. The night before she came to my house, she had a gun to her head and she was going to kill herself. And uh, when I saw that, you know, God moved like that, um, it just launched me and he just gave me the desire and the passion. So it wasn't anything that, you know, I hoped for, but I know a lot of people are like, what, what's a woman like you doing in deliverance? But I love it. I love setting the captives free and exposing the enemy. Very interesting. I'm, uh, I enjoyed your speaking tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Just a couple more questions and then I'm going to go and fill up. Yeah. Good plan. <laughs> I guess you've answered them, Kathy. Why don't you uh, pray? I have one, Kathy. Um, <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm curious, Kathy, um, what you do or how you deal with it when um, witches and warlocks bring in... Um, bad uh, plan, so to speak, demonic um, work in uh, churches, hospitals, large gathering places. Um, first of all, I'm not sure how you discern. I've only had that happen to me once. Went to uh, a, a big country and western concert with my wife, and usually in a large space, I'll pray that the Lord take any anointing I have and spread it over everyone and create a hunger for the Lord Jesus. Well, things were going along fine until the main act came on. And when I started seeing the light show with the Illuminati symbols, I thought, hmm, this is not good. And then I saw a, a black creature come down, something like a rope, down into the main auditorium. At that moment, I asked for the Lord to send the warring angels. Um, shortly after that, <clears throat> I was near an aisle and I saw this um, warlock type character, but it was in the spirit. And he had this big black pointed hat and he had an eye in the middle of his forehead. I raised my hand, called for my sword in the spirit. And the first time in my life, I actually saw it. It was there in my hand. And I brought my eyes down and this creature was gone. I can only um, surmise that the warring angel took it out. But 
when we have that kind of uh, uh, demonic presence in uh, gathering spaces, I uh, wonder what your advice might be. Well, first of all, my advice is you only take on what battle the Lord assigns you to. And sometimes you're going to see demonic stuff, especially, you know, with me being a seer, there's a lot of times I'll see demons on people in churches or principalities or regions, but it's not my assignment. And so you might say, why isn't it my assignment? But not every assignment's yours. You might not be spiritually strong enough. You might not have the battle tubes. You might not be prayed and fasted up. I live a fasted lifestyle because I do deliverance, but not everyone does that. And so I never target anything without instructions of the Holy Spirit that that is my battle. And then if I'm going, again, I'm, I'm very you know, prophetically in tune to the Holy Spirit. So I, I draw out what he wants me to draw out. And so that I target and I fight based on the instructions that he's given me. And so with that being said, almost every battle is different. And so, you know, what works for one situation doesn't always work for another. And, you know, the Holy Spirit um, just, just knows, you know, and just an example, I was delivering a, a man of a demon once and it was um, his mom put in like an African witchcraft demon and you know people were trying to get this demon out for a half hour and this guy was thrown across the gym and just you know contortioning and everything and I just stepped back and I said Holy Spirit what do you want me to do and he just said just put three fingers on his forehead and say get out in Jesus name and I did it was that simple and and this demon you know had a huge manifestation out and that's why it's so important to partner with the Holy Spirit. So I would say just get to trust him, know the word of God, definitely. But, you know, I've dealt with witches in meetings. I've dealt with gang members trying to take me out. I've, dr I've dealt with warlords trying to kill me. You know, it's, it's all different and every battle is different. Mm -hmm. Well, I know for sure that you're a powerful lady. Um, when you were starting to pray in the spirit, I saw a big spark in what was a high voltage line, and it was coming down to a really powerful transformer, which represented you. So Thank I knew God. we were in good company tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Bless the Lord. Can um, I ask a question? Real quick, and then I'm going to go. Go ahead, baby. Can, um, can you see demons through Zoom calls? Can uh -huh. you hear me? <laughs> Yes, I can, but I'm not yeah. going to discern right now. <laughs> <laughs> do, do Thank you, you. Do you have any uh, uh, literature on seeing, on uh, seeing in the spirit, Kathy? Or uh, I don't. I I know I haven't done anything like that yet. People can go. Um, over to my website, which is kathydegraministries.org. You know, there's articles, there's a link to my podcast, there's links to the Charisma courses, all my books are over there. So that's a good place to, to link to everything. Um, I always just tell people intern with me because when I intern people, then I, you know, teach them how to see, but that's what everyone wants to do is how do we see in the spirit and that's another thing I, I just always, you know, tell people, just pray and ask the Holy Spirit. And if he wants you to see it, he's going to reveal it to you. Okay. Well, Kathy, would you pray for all of us and uh, the people that are going to watch us in the future? Amen. Amen. Well, I know what I'm going to pray over you because the Lord gave me a word. So you guys better get ready. Um, and I'm just going to, I would just kind of prophetically want to release this word before I pray. Okay. But God is really raising up a lot of you to be deliverance ministers and deliverance ministries. And I do not say that lightly. Um, this is something, a very serious impartation that I usually don't do because people can't handle it. But that's what I was feeling like halfway in here is God is just really wanting to raise up deliverance ministers and ministries. And so I'm going to, you know, just pray and impart that into whoever he wants to do that to. So bless the Lord. Okay. We thank you, Father.
So Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that every word will go forth. We thank you that your word says it'll accomplish, it'll please for the very thing in which you sent it. It'll prosper. Not one word will fall to the ground. I bind and I rebuke all demonic retribution against this broadcast, against this time. I say there will be no retribution for me sharing or the host being here in the name of Jesus Christ. There will be no static into our broadcast as it replays in the name of Jesus and as it just um, formulates through the computer, everything will be perfect so that this broadcast saves and can get out to the multitudes. I decree and I declare for your anointing to rise. I command for your giants to fall down in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of rejection, I remove you at the core, at the root cause, at its entry point right now in the name of Yahshua Messiah. I speak and I decree healing in your physical bodies and I command that spirit of fear to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. All controlling Jezebel spirits. I'm seeing over somebody um, I'm seeing like Jezebel's face. I'm seeing a, a metal helmet, like a metal mask and a sword that someone's really been having some strong Jezebel spirits in their life. So right now I break that Jezebel witchcraft over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I destroy the mighty destroyer in the name of Jesus. And I bind and I rebuke every yoke and I command it to go in Jesus Christ's name. Every evil perpetrator in your life life be destroyed in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. Every tongue that is spoken against you, I rescind those word curses. I rescind that gossip, that slander. I say it is null and void in the name of Jesus. Every leadership that did not believe in you or spoke word curses over you, I command that false prophecy, that false teaching, those false words to fall down to the ground is ash and be burned, destroyed, and scattered in Jesus Christ's name. I command the enemy to vanish, to vanish on your behalf. Every demonic target, every plot, every place he has your name, every demonic marker written against you, I destroy it in the spiritual realm in the name of Jesus Christ. Every witchcraft and warlock spirit, that's been penetrating your heart. Every soul tie, I command it to break and sever in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you. you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise Jesus, God. fill them. Fill them. Come against every demonic attack. Holy Spirit, give them fresh fire. Give them fresh filling. Ruach and Kodesh, give them fresh breath. Give them fresh wind. Father God, just shower your love upon them. Jesus, be their peace that surpasses all understanding. Jesus. Holy Spirit, just come, 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 touch them. Glory of God, go forth right now. Right now, touch them, touch them. Jesus, may your name be magnified. May your name be glorified. We exalt you, Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords, bright and morning star, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Lion of the tribe of Judah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Kathy, for coming on, and we bless your ministry, and we encourage you everybody to go out and uh, get, get some of Kathy's ma material and pray for her ministry. And we look forward to seeing God raise you up in a mighty way. Amen.